Good morning. This, today we're doing a meditation, the sixth of ten meditations on the five all accompanying mental factors. And in this meditation we'll be meditating on the effects ripening in the present. This is based on the, a series of meditations that have been de developed from how to understand the mind, but also includes elements from joyful path of good fortune and analysing the law of karma, cause and effect. So the free script here is um, the five all accompanying mental factors are so called because they accompany every primary mind. If just one of them were missing, the primary mind would not be able to cognize its object. So we're going to investigate this. What are this? What is this primary mind and these mental factors that make up? Uh, consciousness. Uh, the one couldn't exist without the other. Primary mind couldn't resist, exist without its mental factors. Mental factors couldn't exist without there being consciousness. So it's a dependent relationship. Um, in this meditation, we're going to investigate virtuous sense effects ripening. So instead of the the mental primary mind, so we're going to look at the uh, sense awarenesses, the primary minds. Okay, I'll pause now so you'll do, better do the preparatory practices so that you have the basis for developing realizations. So we shall enter into the contemplation and arrive at a place of meditation. Definition and function of contact. The definition of contact is a mental factor that functions to perceive its objects as pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. It functions to give rise to feelings. When our mind cognizes an object the virtu and virtuous karma is ripening, it perceives it as pleasant. Pleasant feelings will develop. For example, if the virtuous karma of having a mind of love and being generous to others is ripening, then we will have pleasant feelings and we will enjoy wealth. If we have good karma helping others, giving and nursing the sick, we will have the karma to enjoy tasting food or a cup of tea. Feeling experiences the object in the way that our mind has been karmic and conditioned towards that object or generically towards food in general. If we are feeling healthy and well, we will enjoy eating food. If not, we won't. This is karmically conditioned. <laughs> Divisions of contact and feeling. There are six types of contact. First, sense contact. Four, contact associated with eye consciousness. We see beauty if we have good karma. The first moment is perception. The second moment onwards is an experience, a feeling. A virtuous mind sees beauty, virtue and inspiration in the courage of others. For example, someone who enjoys being around old people. They see elderly people as beautiful, or when a mother loves her child. It may depend upon our karmic connection of this life, but a bodhisattva sees the beauty and potential in everyone. Five, contact associated with ear consciousness. We hear beauty if we have good karma. We enjoy hearing others' voices and take an interest in helping them if we have good karma that created contact associated with ear consciousness. We will then enjoy our experience of ear awareness because our karma is pure. If we don't, then we might be better using our time doing purification. 6. 
contact associated with no consciousness. Certain people are more sensitive to smells and tastes. Some people perceive a bitter taste in their mouth if they get angry. If we are unwell and cannot enjoy our food and drink, this might be our negative karma ripening. If we poisoned others in the past, we may get sickness preventing us from enjoying healthy food, or we might not be able to access our not be able to get access to healthy food or clean water. Seven contact associated with tongue awareness as above. Eight contact associated with body consciousness. If we have good karma with regard to exercise and we will enjoy exercise, if we go for a run and get fit and we enjoy our run, then we have good karma with regard to our body consciousness. If we enjoy having a cold shower, then we have good karma with regard to our body consciousness. Yeah, I've, re I've written these things on the commentary on each of these five sense contacts. They're my, they're my own views. Buddhas only have pleasant feelings, and gods of the form realm and the formless realm have pleasant and neutral feelings, but do not have any unpleasant feelings. And beings living in the desire realm and experience all three types of feeling. Buddhas and superior bodhisattvas have completely pure karma. Gods of the form and formless realm have taken rebirth in those realms, thanks to their positive karma from previous lives. They have purged all their negative karma, and so do not have any unpleasant perceptions or experiences. However, this is not a path to liberation, since they have not abandoned and eradicated self-grasping ignorance. They will eventually take rebirth in samsara once again from imprints of delusions. During sleep, most of our feelings are neutral feelings, but while we are dreaming, we may also experience unpleasant feelings. This is because we do not have sense feelings in our dream because we have a subtle dream body, not our gross waking body. That's my view, my understanding. The function of feeling. The general function of feeling is to experience the effects of previous actions or karma. In the sutras, Buddha says, the fully ripened effective actions ripen not on soil or stones, but only on consciousness. This is because only consciousness has feelings, and only with feelings can we experience the ripened effect of actions. Virtuous actions result in pleasant feelings. Non-virtuous actions in unpleasant feelings and neutral actions in neutral feelings. We tend to think that pleasantness and unpleasantness are characteristics that exist from the side of the object, but in reality, whether we experience an object as pleasant or unpleasant depends entirely upon our karma. Two people might eat the same food, and one finds it delicious, while the other thinks it's revolting. If this happens, it is because the first person has good karma ripening with respect to that food, and the second person has bad karma. So we've taken, tasted a particular food before. 
and may have created karma with respect to that food. The next time you eat the same kind of food, you're going to experience the effects from that karma you created from the first time. Within these sense consciousnesses. More specifically, the function of contaminated feelings is to act as the basis for the three poisons. Attachment, hatred and ignorance. Contaminated pleasant feelings induce attachment. Contaminated unpleasant feelings induce hatred. And contaminated neutral feelings induce ignorance. In Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life, Shantideva says, Because of feeling, craving develops. Placement meditation, we will look again at the definition of intention and also a sentence of cont or two of contemplation that I have written. The definition of intention is a mental factor that functions to focus its primary mind on an object. And also look at attention, which focuses the mind on particular attributes of the object. Therefore, the way we perceive an object depends upon our attention. If our attention is appropriate, we are practicing Dharma, we are protecting our mind. If our intention is inappropriate, we are developing unpeaceful delusion states of mind. So with intention towards an object and attention towards particular attributes of those objects, we develop delusions and negative karma with respect to objects and with respect to people. We develop, we make contact with objects that we have previous karma with, we develop feelings, Pleasant, unpleasant and neutral feelings we develop delusions, attachment, hatred and ignorance and we continue to create karma. Therefore we need to change our intention and change the way we practice attention mindfully throughout the day. strong, pure intention to practice Dharma and to improve our aspiration which leads us to increase our effort in the practice of Dharma. Therefore we need to focus our mind on helpful objects with our intention. We need to practice appropriate attention, guarding our mind from delusion. That concludes the meditation for as long as you want. And for the postscript, for after the practice, after you've done the dedications, all contaminated feelings are objects to be abandoned. A 
it is easy to generate a wish to abandon unpleasant feelings, but to generate a wish to abandon contaminated, pleasant, unusual feelings, we need a very good understanding of the nature of samsara. Both contaminated feelings and contaminated discriminations are key links in a chain that binds us to samsara. Contaminated discriminations identify objects as pleasant, unpleasant or neutral, and contaminated feelings experiencing, experience them in these ways. Contaminated feelings then give rise to the three poisons, which in turn lead us to perform contaminated actions, the principal causes of rebirth in samsara. All this is leading us to realise that nothing exists on its own side, and that it is our mind that creates our experiences, not the objects. Therefore, we need to continue, we need to develop renunciation of contaminated feelings of all types, realise the real nature of samsara, and continue to contemplate, to hold that thought mindfully throughout the day and to study and meditate on the stages of the pattern to the enlightenment of Lamrim. Thank you and have a good day.